What's going on guys, Bridget here back with more Codex and we are going to start on the CSS learning platform here. We've got two sections again that we can do for free so that's where we're going to start. We're going to start with selectors and exercise one which is Picasso. So let's jump into it here. Um, what is CSS? Welcome to the second course of the Origins Trilogy. So far, we've been laying bricks and walls with HTML, but all the web pages are still black and white and lack vibes. Let's change that with CSS Magic. CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, is a styling language that paints a website with colors, fonts, layouts, and animations. Learn CSS to create stunning web pages, enhances user experience, and make your site stand out in the digital crowd. Plus, it's fun to see your design ideas come to life. It's time to discover your inner Picasso. Let's see the power of CSS by adding some styles for the website of a pizza shop. Okay, we have the pizza shop there. In our code editor on the right, there should already be some HTML loaded into the index.html file tab. Next, copy and paste the following into the styles.css file tab. Okay. Hit run. All right, and that adds, um, actually, let's do this. So let's run that, and this is what it looks like beforehand. You know, it's pizza, it's boring, it's black, it's white. Run. Oh, wait. Paste this. Uh, no. Copy. Paste. Allow. Run. And then it adds some color, it changes the font, it makes the font bold, and it puts little rounded edges on the picture. So that's pretty cool. All right, so that one was pretty easy. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, solution. Okay, we already did that. Okay, um, syntax, rule syntax. Let's dig further into how CSS is written. In a given CSS file, we will write rules for how the elements should be styled on our page. The syntax for these rules looks like this. Selector, div, text in line, center, declaration. This is the declaration, this is the selector. Every rule begins with the selector, followed by curly brackets. Inside declarations are made of property, value, pairs, separated by a colon. Each line ends with a semicolon. You can add as many rules as you want to your CSS files. Some of your favorite web pages might have hundreds of CSS rules. Let's practice writing some CSS. Um, copy and paste the following HTML. So we'll paste that in here, okay? Uh, next, it's time to move on to the style CSS tab. Select the P paragraph element. So we're going to do P, P curly braces. Um, we're going to set the color to red. Oh, wait. First, before I do that, let's go ahead and run it. So it just says Malcolm in the middle. We're going to set the color to red and the font size set to 25 pixels. And run. Okay, um, don't worry too much about what these properties and values mean or do. We just want you to get used to writing CSS rules. Save the file and see what happens to our page. Okay, so we've seen what it was. That's done. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, we did all that. All right, selectors part one. What are selectors? In the last exercise, we learned that CSS rules begin with selectors. Let's explore what this means. Selectors are used to determine which HTML elements get styled. The most common type of selector is the type selector, which selects all matching elements on the page for styling. For example, div styles go here. As shown above, whatever declarations we replace the comments with are replied to every div element in the connected HTML file. Class and ID selectors. If we want to get more specific, we can select elements by their HTML attributes. The following example selects elements with a class of class name or an ID of ID name. Selecting by class is done with a period and used to style multiple elements with a matching class attribute. Selecting by ID is done with a hashtag and used to style a single element with a matching ID attribute. However, we can even be more specific. Rather than selecting every element with a matching class or ID, the example above selects only div elements that either have a class of class name or an ID of ID name. Let's practice using, oh wait, uh, 
This specific kind of selection is also known as targeting. Let's practice using type and class ID selectors. We're going to copy this and we're going to paste it in here and then run it. And it says rosary red, violet, or blue, sugar is sweet, and so are you. All right, next in the styles CSS file, use a type selector to select a div with the following. So we're going to do div, wait, dot div. We're going to do border, one pixel solid, text align, center. And that didn't do anything. So. Oh, it's a type selector. Okay, so I don't need this. Run. Okay. And we see it added a border and it moved everything to the middle. All right. Um, then style all elements with the line class. So to do a class, we do dot line. And then we do uh, width 50%. Margin auto padding 10 pixels and then text decoration underline. All right, so you see we got this underline now and this stuff changed. All right, lastly, select the following elements with their ID attributes attributes use ID selectors to apply the following styles. So it's an ID, so we're gonna do hashtag roses. And we're gonna do um, background color red. We're gonna do hashtag violet background color violet. Hashtag sugar background color beige. All right, you see it's all white right now. And there you go. A red, violet, beige. All right. On to the next one. All right. Grouping. As we dive further into CSS, we will begin to notice that we're assigning the same styles to different elements. For example, we may have the following CSS code. As we add more, so this is saying uh, unordered list and ordered list are the same. As we add more styles to our page, our CSS may start to become repetitive and less readable. We can group our styles together so we aren't repeating ourselves. So here they put the unordered list and the ordered list together so it's less code and less confusing. This way, we can apply a single rule to multiple elements at once. We can also get more specific by using the greater than symbol to select child elements, such as only list item elements under, under ordered li unordered lists. Um, let's practice the selectors. So copy this into the index file. And let's see what that looks like right now. That's what it looks like. Uh, do the following inside of the styles. So we're going to select both the UL and OL and give it a background color of, oh wait, and assign a border of one pick solid, a width of 200 pixels. And let's see what that looks like, okay? Then we're going to do unordered list and give it a background color of light green. Okay. Ordered list. And we'll do background color of sky blue as well as the color of white. Okay, um, use the grade event selector and style the li list 
that's inside UL, I think it's LI that's inside UL with the text decoration of underline wavy three picks brown. Uh, that didn't do anything. Did it? No, it did not. Let me see how they did it up here. Uh, okay. I mean, there it is. And then Oh, I see. So this is for the O L L I um a text decoration of underline dotted three pigs indigo. See what that looks like. Okay. And yeah, that did what it was supposed to, so all right, guys, I am going to hit complete here, and I'm going to go ahead. Oh, wait, feature unlocked. You have 250 XP. This means you can now join our own platform community to chat and hang out with fellow learners. Say hi in introductions channel. We'll do that later. But I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here, guys. But let me know what you think in the comments, and I thank you for hanging out. See you on the next one. Goodbye.